I don't remember him. Sister? Okay. Another bill. Let's remember him. Anyone else? It's good to see Sister Alyssa here tonight. So continue to remember her. But anyone else? Good to see Brother and Sister Landmark here too. So good to have you back. All right, we'll go ahead and stand then. Brother David, would you care to lead us in prayer? <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you once again for, Lord, allowing us to come into your presence. And Father, we thank you for the grace and mercy that you show to us. And Father, we ask and pray that you'll <clears throat> be with each of the needs, Lord, that's been lifted up before you this night, Father. And we ask and pray that you'll administer to each one, Lord. And Father, that you'll grant them each one the touch that they're in need of. Lord, we ask and pray that you'll forgive us, Father, of our shortcomings. Forgive us of our sins, Lord. And Father, we just ask and pray that you'll <clears throat> lead us and guide us through all things. Yes. And Lord, we ask and pray that you'll have your way in this service, Father. You'll anoint the one that comes to administer his, your word to us, Lord. And Father, we just ask and pray that you'll be with us, and we thank you, Father, for the love that you have for us. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Supplieth every need. Oh, while I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. Well, I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. Oh, what a wondrous blessing. I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. 
Well, I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see His smiling face. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Amen. Amen. Y'all can be seated. Would the young sisters have a song first? Go ahead and have y'all. And Sister Glenda, Sister Lori, who y'all have one after that? still try to take control Cause I get scared when I can't see the end And all you want from me is to let go Your parting waters making a way for me Your Don't even see You've answered my prayer Before I even speak All you need for me to be Is still I bring my praise before I bring my need Cause there's no fear you've not already seen I rest my heart on all your promises Cause I have seen and know your faithfulness Your parting waters Making a way for me you're moving mountains that I don't even see. You've answered my prayer before I even speak. All you need for me to be is still. I bring my praise before I bring my need Cause there's no fear you've not already seen I rest my heart on all your promises Cause I have seen in all your faithfulness your parting waters making a way for me your moving mountains that i don't even see you've answered my prayer before i even speak all you need for me to be Don't even see You've answered 
answered my prayer before I even speak all you need for me to be is still I want to thank the Lord that I was able to be here tonight um, it's been it's been a rough journey but he's been with us through the whole time and I want to thank him for that and I want to thank all of you for your prayers because, because they've been felt and I love you all and I love the Lord and I want to thank him for everything he's done for me hey All right, y'all can be seated. Such a Glenda, such a Lori, such a Charity. Would you have one after that? Proud of our young kids. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore. All that what a day, a glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. day, a glorious day that will be. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more poverty over there and forever I will be with the one who died for me what a day a glorious day that will be what a day And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, a glorious day. sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, a glory. 
glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land, what a day, a glorious day that will be. Thank you, sisters. All right, Sister Charity. Sister Debbie, would you feel like a song tonight? someone so amazed but every now and then I hear it from a broken heart of faith spoken with a whisper as their tears are wiped away and it stills my breath to hear them say God is good, God is good, when life doesn't go the way we wish it would, he'll always be what he's always been, and that's understood, and always Always, always, God is good. Standing in the darkness, though fear is what they feel, they testify of a faith that's settled and is real. Cause when the calm turns into chaos And the peace is stronger than the pain Knowing they are held By the God who doesn't change This simple truth It still remains God is good God is good When life doesn't go the way we wish it would He'll always be what he's always been And that's understood Always, always, always is good standing in the darkness though fear is what they feel they testify of a faith that's settled and it's real cause when calm turns into chaos the peace is stronger than the pain Knowing they are held by the God who doesn't change. This simple truth, it still remains. God is good. God is good. When life doesn't go the way. He's always be what he's always been that's understood. 
Is good. Thank you, Sister. All right, y'all can be seated. Sister Deborah. Sister Hope, Sister Becky, would you have one after that?
Yeah, thank you, Sister. All right, Sister Becky, Sister Hope. forgiven because you were forsaken I'm accepted you are condemned I'm alive and well your spirit lives within me because you died and rose again It's 
my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. Good to be back tonight. Good to see each one of you. Appreciate the Lord. Got a lot of people that needs prayer tonight. Old brother Yars had floaters real bad in his eye, and he had to have one of them operated on. Supposed to have the other one operated on maybe after the first year, but they replaced the saline in your eye with with a new saline got to where he couldn't hardly see so may the lord bless him remember brother bradbury as brother david's already mentioned good to see sister Alyssa here tonight god bless you sister and others i went to the emergency room monday because i was coughing so much i promised myself sunday night if i if i did keep coughing like I was and I would go so I got up and went Monday morning and they said I had rhinovirus which I never heard of before I guess uh, I guess it's because that I've got a camel nose <laughs> my my mom was a camel and they called called her camel and I guess it's just for short for that, so. But it's something to do with your runny nose and sneezing and stuff like that. And I did bring a bring a mask, and I thought, well, if, if I start coughing or anything, I'll either go back here or, or because I've had to sit up and sleep in a in my lazy chair for five nights and last night I went to bed and I wish I hadn't so uh, so I'm doing good like a, like old saying good for the shape of man I'm doing good <laughs> thank, thank the Lord for God you know as a man told me one time he said this man got up and he said I got a testimony and he said I think thank the Lord for God so so I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise his name. Well, Brother Kevin is going to minister to us tonight. May the Lord bless our brother. Let us stand, please, and I'll turn it over to him. May God bless you, Brother Kevin. Thank you, Brother God bless you, Brother. Bless you. Praise the Lord. Good to be here tonight, and it's good to see Brother Allen back with us. Praise the Lord. I'm Glad that he's able to be here with us. We just want to continue to pray for our brother for a full recovery and the many others that stand in need. So much is going on and a lot of sickness. But we know that God is, he is faithful and God answers prayer. You know, I, I, I was sitting there as just listening to the songs and something came to my mind and I just wanted to look that up and and God is faithful we want to serve the Lord with our whole heart let us look to him now in a word of prayer gracious heavenly father and almighty God we come to you tonight Lord thankful in our hearts for your many blessings, Lord, and all that you have provided us, Lord, in the natural and mostly in the spirit, Lord. And we thank you tonight, God, for the opportunity to be here, to be with your people, Lord, and to come together and worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we pray now for a few moments of time, Lord, that 
you would anoint me as your servant, Lord, that I might be able to speak something, Lord, that would minister through that of your word to your people, Lord. Father, that would edify and lift us up together and encourage us, Lord, in our walk with you. Now may you have your way in it all, and may you be glorified in it all, for I commit it now into your hands, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may be seated, brother, sister. We was saying there, and you excuse me if I have to use my handkerchief, I think my allergies are, <laughs> they're in full swing. Seems like any time a little bit of rain comes through, it just stirs them up. And so maybe it has something to do with mold or something, I, I don't know. But um, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me that much. You just have to be prepared to take care of the situation. <laughs> But anyway, you know, uh, I know many have been battling situations and in their health and many fighting different things on different fronts. And, but God is faithful. And if you want to turn into the book of 2 Kings, into the 20th chapter, you all know this story of Hezekiah. But what I remembered about it was what it said about Hezekiah. Second Kings, the 20th chapter. In the first verse it says, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die. And not live. How would that make us feel? For a prophet of God to prophesy over is such a thing. We're going to read just how Hezekiah felt. It says, then he turned, Hezekiah, then he turned his face to the wall. And prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord. He was earnestly crying out to God. I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. I believe God is moved and answers prayer. I'll never forget. That was one of Brother Bud's last messages. God answers prayer. Here we see Hezekiah is sick unto death. Isaiah prophesies unto him. But Hezekiah who has lived a life before God that was pleasing. It says with a perfect heart. And have done all that which is good in thy sight. Hezekiah wept sore, and then it says it came to pass. 
before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up into the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake. For my servant David's sake. You know, I, I, won't, I, I won't remember the years. Nor the dates. But I'm thinking it was right around 15 years. We all remember Sister Linda, who's gone on to be with the Lord. But I remember when she came to the Lord... She had just come through a great sickness. One that they didn't even expect her to live through. I think it even astonished the doctors that she had survived. I believe it was called Empyema. And they, a person that normally gets it in one lung doesn't survive. And Sister Linda had it in both lungs. But when the hand of the Lord is on you, and God has a purpose intended in your life, there's no sickness that can take you. Sister Linda, come to the Lord. And I believe it was nearly, if not more than, just a little bit, 15 years God added to her life. That they never did predict she would live that long. So, brother, sister, you be encouraged tonight. You live before the Lord with a perfect heart. Amen. And when you cry out to him in that hour of need, know this, he hears your prayer. Amen. And God is faithful. Now, tonight, I... Go from there, I, I want to turn tonight to the 8th chapter of the book of Romans. Not knowing just really how much I will go in there. But I believe that God is conforming us into the image of His Son. How many believes that? This is a process. Amen. You know, many times we, we speak of getting the Holy Ghost, having the Holy Ghost. And many times some can misconstrue the fact that once they receive the Holy Ghost, maybe everything should instantly change, but... Brother, sister, there's really a process of growing that we go through. And there's a process of changing that we're in. We are being changed and conformed to be in the image of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to start reading in the first verse of the 8th chapter. Because you know, this, this entire 8th chapter, brother, sister, I, I really enjoy reading through it. Because as a believer, it takes us from the beginning all the way through to eternity. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. 
For what the law could not do, that it, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sinned, sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemns sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Then he says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Amen. I'm thankful for the Spirit of God tonight that is dwelling in us. Amen. And I've said before to you the same Holy Ghost. Amen. That dwelt in Jesus Christ in the fullness. We have in us in a measure. Amen. But we are members of a body together. That make up the body of Christ universal. Brother, sister, we are moving quickly into a time when Paul spoke there in Ephesians. He said in the 13th verse of the 4th chapter, till we all come into the unity of the faith. Amen. And of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man. How many wants this? I know you do. I don't have to ask you. But I want to encourage you tonight and remind you that we are right on time. Amen. The devil, he may come against us. He may fight us along this way. But you be encouraged. We are the bride of Christ. And I always like to quote the scripture that work which he hath begun in you, he will finish until the day of Jesus Christ. I believe that. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Certainly we have a different outlook. I was thinking earlier how man today, he, he's focusing so much on materialism. Focusing so much on being successful. Whether that is financial or not, it doesn't matter. But really they just... They, they preach success today. What is really success anyway? I feel like I was successful just getting to church tonight. And I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord that we have a desire. Think about that. We have a desire to come together. As the songs were being sang and I looked out. Over the congregation. And I thought to myself, really? And I, and I don't speak this about, uh, don't take this wrong. I'm not talking about someone not being here at all. But the church should be full tonight. I, I don't, and I'm not saying that. I hope you understand. But people should have a desire to come and worship the Lord. I'm just talking in general. I hope you understand what I'm saying. But society has drifted from God. They don't even have it in them. To worship the Lord. In some ways... Maybe I don't want to go down that route, but many of your denominational worldly churches, they're not even about worshiping the Lord. 
They're coming together for every reason but that. But the church should be full tonight with people wanting to worship the Lord and honor Him. But because they lack the Spirit of God, that desire is not even in them. But because the Spirit is in us, that desire is going to grow stronger. The things of the Lord are going to be more attractive unto us. He says, for to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh, they cannot even please God. He says, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ. Oh, let this speak very loud tonight. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ. He is none of his. Maybe once every other service, I repeat it. But maybe tonight I will say it in a little different way. It's been said, if you don't have the Holy Ghost, get it. Seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him. While he is near. If you feel the Lord tugging on your heart. You know that your life is not in line. Now is the time. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are not debtors, not to the flesh. We are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And then he says, as many... For as many as are led by the Spirit of God. Brother, sister, this has become more vivid, more clear in our day than any other. I think of what Jesus said. When, when he spoke those words, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will lead you into all truth. Amen. There is the separating point of the true believer. Brother Branham said there's three types of believers. There's the true believer. The unbeliever and the make-believer. 
But that word, that truth is what separates the true believer from the other two. They'll never come to it. They'll never see it. They'll never stand for it. And in our day, I think about all that has passed through. It's been mentioned. All of the ones that have passed through and sat in these seats. And the rows of ministers that have been on this platform. Many of them would speak maybe. Some may say, well, why would Brother Jackson ask them if they weren't really true? Wouldn't God show Brother Jackson? No. Because there's even a purpose in that. Those that are following the flesh will go right after those men. And we even seen that happen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. I have to say amen. There's something that speaks to me on the inside, Brother Mark. There's not a devil in hell that could convince me otherwise. Because I am more than sure of what is on the inside. I am more than sure of what is leading and guiding me. We had a brother and a sister came to visit. And we had a wonderful time speaking, conversing around the Word of God and just discussing the goodness of the Lord. Looking back on things that have been not in the way that you might think, but being thankful for where God has brought us from to where we are today. Speaking upon the change that takes place in our life. And I remember this statement was said. And it's kind of still ringing in my mind. But I believe it was spoken just like this. It is almost, it is hard to explain. The change that takes place in your life when you receive the Holy Ghost. It is hard to explain that to someone. To really understand it, you need to receive it yourself. Then you will understand. But the Spirit beareth witness. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit. That we are the children of God. You may not have had an experience all just like someone else. But I've heard many different stories and experiences of people. But I can tell you myself, even as a young child, I felt the presence of God. I'm not bragging. That's not the reason I say it.
But I believe when you are predestinated, God's hand is up on you the whole entire way. I can remember feeling that I was different. Don't laugh about that because you know how I mean it. There was something different between me and the other children at school. It didn't make me better. But I know this, I didn't carry on like they did. I didn't get into the things that they did, not all the way, I mean all the way through high school. I wasn't attracted to it. But the spirit within us, it says the spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit, our spirit being, <laughs> confirming. I'll say this tonight. Because I believe it to be true and amen. If you have a doubt about your experience, you have not received the Holy Ghost. Because once you do, you have no doubt. There's nothing else like it. Somebody might say, now you've just upset the apple cart. All these people that battle these spiritual battles in their mind, you've just told them they don't have the Holy Ghost. There's nothing that can convince me I don't have it. I know what's dwelling inside of me. Without a doubt. It says the Spirit itself. Beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God. And join heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him. That we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that this suffering. The sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared. With the glory which shall be revealed in us. Oh my when I really think about it. And just the things that we are suffering maybe. Maybe refer to it as a light affliction. I really know of no one in our hour, in my day, that have even suffered like any of the early Christians. The persecution. But he says, I, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. How many see what I'm talking about? The eighth chapter, he takes it from creation right to eternity. I'll show you. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. 
And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves. How many feel this way? How many sick of this world? I'm desiring deliverance. Man is plagued with disease and sickness. Spiritual wickedness, wickedness in high places. Every time you turn the television on, you don't get news. It's not what I call news. It's opinions. Because you know what? When I was a child, it seems like the news... The news came on for maybe 30 minutes. That's the national news. And they would summarize everything that was going on in the world in 30 minutes. And people had a level head to listen and digest what they were hearing to be the truth in the news. But President Trump is the one that coined the phrase fake news. And for the majority of it, and I say it because I believe there are some that are trying to present that. Right news. The truth about it. And I want to say this because I say give credit where credit is due. I am thankful for the network that put on the show. Honoring the patriots of America. The soldiers. Those that have fought. I'm trying to keep from saying Fox News. Now if there's any doubt in your mind, you know. I'm not saying that they're perfect. But you don't see any other broadcast station saying anything about that. Because it don't fit their agenda. I don't, it's so hard to not say things, but. As you've all seen in the polling. How the president's numbers are going down and the vice president's numbers are going down. Now there's shakeup in their offices. It's crumbling. I hope it turns to more than dust. Because it's evilness. Twenty-third verse says, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves. I do. I'm gonna say this too. I, I feel I feel so bad. For the young children that's being born into society. That will probably not get the opportunity. To hear truth about. Their very existence and how they got here. Someone was telling me the other day the number of genders that they now have.
My Bible tells me in the beginning God created man and woman. And I believe that number was over 200 genders. Because they don't just look at a gender from the standpoint of a sexual gender, if you understand what I'm saying. You can pick a gender that really doesn't matter to that. And they're, they're pumping this into the minds of young people. But the little children that will be taught this garbage, that will be brought up in these homes, and some of them probably abused in ways that is not considered physical abuse, I was telling someone the other day, I said, not too many years ago, brother, sister, you'll know this is the truth. Not too many years ago, in the workplace, sexual harassment was a big deal. You had to take classes. Insurance companies required employers to do certain training on sexual harassment. Do you know what today? You don't even hear about it. You don't hear anything about it. It's gone. No training. I'll have to say there shouldn't have to be any training. Because it should never exist. But then I seen in the news today. Where they're going to remove. A certain phrase that they cannot use anymore. I wish I, I, my mind fails me right now. Of what that was. But they're trying to neutralize everything but in a way that anything goes. Right. I will go on. Waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what? A man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses. Maybe I want to add this in there. Sometimes we, I said we're a work in progress. The Spirit of God is, is working on all of us yet. But the end result will be we will be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And while I may refer to a lot of things in the natural, that's all right. Because it gives us an idea of what to look at. Not too many weeks ago, God laid it upon Brother Allen's heart. You'll all remember, he mentioned that sometimes we, as human beings, we got into a habit maybe 
of saying certain things. It really became just a habit. Certain words, they were just habits. Slang words, you, you know what I'm saying. You, I'm not going to say any of them. You know what I mean. Because really that word represented something else. And I'll be quite honest with you. I would not think that if Jesus Christ walked with us today, he would even speak in those ways. I want to be like Jesus. I want my heart to be pure to God. And I'll say, thank you, Brother Allen, because it made a great impression. First of all, it was something that needed to be cleaned up. You know, I'm going to say this. I don't think that Jesus, the name of Jesus should be used as a byword. No, sir. Neither should the name God be used as a byword. That's the world for you. But it says, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses, whether they be in the body or in our makeup. Some would say, I cannot, Brother Kevin, I cannot help myself. I was born that way. Well, let me say this. What about that rebirth? That should have wiped all that away. Maybe not instantly, but you will soon learn and, and do better. Those old habits will be gone. I'll say it in that way. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. My, think about that. What is dwelling inside of us, the work that it is doing, and the effect that it is having, the protection that it's giving us, even when we're unable to pray for ourselves, maybe we don't even know what to pray for. Have you ever been that low? You don't even have to be in a low state. I know I've heard many say, I just don't know what to do about it. But the Spirit of God knows exactly what to do. He is our guide. When man takes things into his own hands, he will make a mess of every situation. That's why I said, the other night, I said, I want to include God in everything in my life. Every decision, everything I do, I want, I want to consult with God. I want it to be His will. He that searcheth the hearts 
knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, see, according to the will of God. You cannot go wrong. If we seek the Lord for every decision that we make, Brother Kevin, are you saying that I should pray before I go to the store and buy a loaf of bread? No, sir. But when you wake up that morning, you pray, God, you be with me today and you protect me. And when you make that trip to the store, you've already prayed for that journey. God knows you need bread. You don't have to pray and ask him if you can have it. God knows we have need of it. In verse 28, which we read so much. And I think of that about Hezekiah. He says, and we know that all things work together for good. I don't care what we face. I care that you face it. How many understands? I care that you face different situations, every one of them. Brother Allen cares. But he says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. And you know what? The world wants to take this scripture and apply it to everybody. But I'll have you know, it don't apply to everybody. No, sir. You got a lot of people out there that quote scripture that don't know what they're quoting. They quote scripture, they don't even serve the Lord. But it sounds good. To them that love God and to them who are what? The called, according to his purpose. And then verse 29 through 32. For whom he did foreknow. When did he foreknow us? Did he just know me in 1963? On November 18th? No, sir, he knew me long before that. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. Before the foundation of the world was, God saw my life. He saw every day of my life. He saw every situation and the outcome of every time, every situation. He saw that I would accept him. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate. There's my title. To be conformed to the image of his son. Amen. That is a promise. That is going to happen. That is coming to fruition. You know that word too. Fruition. Thank you. For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren.
I want to be like Jesus Christ. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? Amen. We, we need to really realize this. If God be for us, who can be against us? You know the first words in that song, I've got my mind made up. I've got my foot on the rock. But in that first verse, and we always start out real slow, right? It says, I started out to what? To win this race. You know what? There is no option of losing. To serve the Lord and to look upon His face. That's going to be a reality. Moreover, whom He did predestinate, them He called. He also called. And whom He called, them He also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? I'm certainly glad to be on the Lord's side tonight. I'm glad that the Spirit of God is dwelling in us. I'm glad to be a part of the family of God. And being just sitting here in the confines of these four walls is not what makes us a part of the family of God. It is the Spirit of God that is dwelling in us that makes us sons and daughters of God. Right. And you know, many around the world and in other states and in Canada, many different places, they tune in and they listen. And they receive from the word of God. There are brothers. And there are sisters. Some whom we have never met. But there's going to be a meeting. In the air. This race is just about over. Hey. In verse 35, I will come to a close here. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine or nakedness, or peril, or sword. As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. 
Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I feel secure tonight. And it's not a feeling, it's a no-so. I love the Lord with all my heart and I love you people. I love you, you're my brothers, you're my sisters in Jesus Christ. We're all striving. We're all striving together for the same reason in the same race to finish to stay true and obedient to God I told you that I would close there I am going to close my Bible but I'm going to read two things to you that I did write down I will read them quickly their definitions and their definitions on the word conformed I want to leave you with these The transitive definition is to give the same shape, outline or contour to, bring into harmony or accord. I love it. I want to be like Jesus Christ. I want to exemplify the same life that he lived. I want to show forth the same characteristics that Jesus displayed and exemplified. The intransitive def definition says to be similar or identical. To be in agreement or harmony and to be obedient or compliant. I want to be obedient unto God. Right. I want to be, I'll use that word, compliant with the word of God, lining up to. Amen. Because those words ring in my mind till we all come into the unity of the faith. This is all done through the preaching of the word of God. You believe that tonight? We must remain faithful. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, Lord, for your presence. We thank you for each and every soul, Lord, that has come out tonight. Those that made the effort, Lord, and to be here. May you bless them, Lord, and we lift up to you now, Lord, those that may stand in need. We pray for our precious Brother Allen. Lord, that you'll continue to minister to him and bring healing completely, Lord, to his body. May this condition leave our brother. And Father, may you just touch the others, Lord, that stand in need. Many stand in need, and I know, Lord, they desire a touch from you. I thank you, Lord, for... Our sister that testified, Lord, of your healing touch tonight. And the comfort, Lord, that you give through every situation. Just knowing that you hear our prayer. And that your ever-present help, Lord. Take these words that, Lord, I've spoken. And if I've said anything out of order, Lord, out of line, I, I ask your forgiveness. And may, Lord, it not have been heard. But may you take these words and use them, Lord, for your glory. That it would be edification, uplift, Lord, to every heart and soul. I pray for every brother and sister around this world. Just continue, Lord, to unite us in your love. I commit it to you, Lord, now in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you all tonight. So I turn the service back over to Brother Allen.
Thank you, Brother Kevin. Thank you for the message tonight. Praise, praise the Lord. God is real. And I praise him for that. I, I think uh, different ones that have called me this week from uh, Sister Nolene. She sent an email to Brother Yars asking about me. Brother Jack's sister Alice called me this afternoon and just I, I was just thinking about them all they've gone through and all and then they call me to be concerned about me so may the Lord bless our brother and sister Brother Phil different ones and I thank sister I went to the emergency room Monday as I said I thank sister Lori coming down there and checking on me and trying to if I didn't know if I'd have to stay or not. I didn't just didn't want it to turn into pneumonia. And uh, she said, "If it, if you have stayed, then I'll try to get you somewhere where I can, where I can see you." So I think, I think the nurses here, they're wonderful people. Hey. Each one of them that does the job well, hey. and they they care for other people too, not just. People of the world, they care for them too. It's it's not just something to try to find favor or something. And, of course, Brother Yars come down and stayed with me while I was there in the emergency room for a couple hours. And just, you're good people. Amen. You're God's people. And I praise, praise the Lord for you. For each one of you, you're... You mean mean the world to me, and that maybe that's not a good word, meaning the world to me, the next world. Let me say it that way, the world to come. So God is so good to us, and yes. to give us brothers and sisters, and the concern of the different ones. You don't have to call me. You don't have to email me to know that. You do care, so thank you because I I care for you. Yeah, hey, I know that thing with Brother Bradbury is could could be kind of serious. So pray for him if you would. Uh, may the Lord bless our brother. He is still working, but on light, light duty. It's has something to do with his valve in his heart or something so remember our brother he's a good brother he's always here on Sunday morning so may the Lord bless him and others that it's just just a lot going on a lot going on in the body of Christ that we we need to pray for one another the Bible says pray for one another that you may be healed anointing them and all of course with all and all but this is a little bit of a difficult time, but God knows anyway. So I thank each one of you, and I pray for each one of you. And for the young people, the children, and the babies, I pray for you. And it's good to see our brother and sister from Minnesota. Uh, you all come down pretty often, don't you? That's come this like this used to say, come one and come all. So good, good to have you. Let us stand, please. Turn over, Brother David. Through the sunshine and rain, even sorrow and pain, Jesus still is my comfort and God and his love comforts me and his grace has set me free and someday I shall stand by his side oh I am blessed oh I am blessed oh day that I live, I am blessed. Oh, when I wake 
wake up in the morning till I lay my head to rest. I am blessed. I am blessed. I have shoes for my feet. I have plenty to eat and a hope in heaven by and by oh brothers and sisters on this earth they are mine by my new birth and we will share in that home beyond the sky oh i am blessed oh i am I am blessed, I am blessed, oh, I am blessed, oh, I am blessed, so oh, every day that I live, I am blessed, oh, when I wake up in the morning, Till I lay my head to rest I am blessed I am blessed Oh, when I wake up in the morning Till I lay my head to rest I am blessed I am blessed of all praise um, sister Robin just sent a prayer request that um, he was brother Dennis was supposed to be operated on tomorrow but he's running a fever right now so it might cause him to have to wait on it so just remember our brother in prayer remember the others there's a lot of needs right now yeah 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 amen all right, Brother Charles Bland, would you praise or dismiss tonight? Please?